Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We've had plenty of clouds covering our skies in parts of the valley today, but some areas are seeing severe storms. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. Let's get the latest from Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson right away tonight. Hutch? Thanks so much, Stephanie. We do have a severe thunderstorm warning for the northern Red River Valley north of Grand Forks. We're talking Walsh and Marshall counties not far from Grafton, a thunderstorm cell capable of some very large hail is moving off to the east at around 20 miles per hour. It will be near Grafton, but will likely pass to the north. It will likely pass just to the south of Drayton, although your communities are included in the warning. The potential with this is up to two inch diameter hail, so some very large hail possible from this cell as it moves off to the east over the Red River Valley. Now we do have other thunder shower activity in the far northern valley moving into Kitson County. So basically from the Pembina Crossing toward Hallock, strong thunderstorms there with the potential for some sizable hail as well, upwards of a quarter of an inch diameter to half inch diameter hail. We're also monitoring some cells down in the Stutzman County area. Those moving through northeastern Stutzman County and into northwestern Barnes at this time. Uh, we did get an unconfirmed report of a funnel cloud with those. Uh, so these are some pretty potent storms heading in through the region this evening. They're well west of the FM area. If you are heading out to the fair, go enjoy. Most of us won't see any thunderstorms at all, but the risk is there for a few thunderstorms. I'll have hour by hour details on what you can expect in your forecast, including an update on the smoke situation here in just a few moments. All right, Hutch, thank you. A potentially deadly risk that's lurking in Minnesota waters has a lot of parents talking today. A child is critically ill after developing a rare infection from swimming in a Minnesota lake. State officials say that it happened two hours from the Fargo-Moorhead area at Lake Minnewaska in Polk County. Officials say the child is suffering from severe brain infection caused by an amoeba. It's commonly found in fresh water and soil worldwide. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop looks into what to look out for and how you can reduce your risk. Although swimming in lakes can be tons of fun, there are risks. Nigeria fallery is an amoeba that typically enters the body through the nose from warm lakes and rivers. Then it travels through the nose to the brain and spinal cord where it destroys brain tissue. Most infections can be fatal. A very concerned. It's very alarming because I had not heard of that before. 35 cases of the amoeba have been reported in the U.S. from 2005 to 2014. Two of those 35 cases were reported in Minnesota in 2010 and 2012. Now a possible third case in just five years. I think we'll be a lot more proactive in investigating to see, you know, if they've done any testing or not in those lakes to make sure that my kids aren't exposed to things like that because my kids are very precious to me and I would not want something to happen to them. Um, maybe if the stats were a little higher, I would be a little bit more concerned, but... To me, personally, I'm not really too overly concerned. Early symptoms of the amoeba infection are similar to bacterial meningitis, headaches, fever, and vomiting. Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. You can reduce the risk of infection by wearing a nose clip when swimming or playing in warm water. Infections do not occur from drinking that contaminated water, though. The amoeba has also been found in 15 other states. Like germs, some little critters continue to spread and they're getting closer to home. According to the North Dakota Game and Fish Department, zebra mussel larva has been found in the Red River. The larva has been found at several locations along the river. The North Dakota Game and Fish also wants to remind the public to use caution when transporting water from the river. For more information, head to valleynewslive.com and then click on the hot button. A rocky start to the Red River Valley Fair after a child was pinned under a ride. The accident happened yesterday. The child's mother took a picture and posted this to Facebook, warning other parents about what happened. According to an incident report, a pin that holds the ride in place somehow came undone, which dropped the motorcycle in motion while the child was on it. The child was not seriously injured, but according to fair officials, the rides are inspected every day. And the ride that malfunctioned had been inspected and was properly working yesterday morning. The ride will be reinspected and put back into operation if everything checks out okay. Now, coming up tonight at 6 on Valley News Live, Bradford Eric talks with us and takes us a little deeper into looking at the track record behind some of your favorite rides and what you'll want to know before you buy your ticket. 
Well, we have some new information now. A man facing a felony charge of criminal vehicular homicide has turned himself in. Scott Cernsky is suspected of being under the influence of meth last May when he crashed his vehicle into a car driven by Jacob Kaspravich of Warren, Minnesota, who died at the scene. Cernsky will make his first court appearance tomorrow. A man facing charges in connection with a beating death in Fargo has pleaded not guilty. 44-year-old Clayton Lockwood is facing manslaughter charges in connection with the death of 54-year-old Mario Perez. Perez was found unconscious on his apartment floor with severe injuries to his head and face. He later died from those injuries. Lockwood's next court appearance is scheduled for August 5th. Eric Webb was in state court today where he is facing robbery and gun charges. But his lawyer says his case may un end up in federal court. Webb was sh shot by a Fargo police officer shortly after a holdup in early June. He spent weeks in a hospital before being transferred to the Cass County Jail where he's being held. His bail is at a half a million dollars. Microsoft is planning a new round of layoffs, and it's unknown if it will impact any local employees. The company plans to cut nearly 8,000 jobs to restructure its phone hardware business. It's bought Nokia's phone business last year for more than $7 billion, but it never gained traction against Apple's iPhone and Google's Android system. Now, we reached out to Microsoft and Fargo today, but they said they would not comment on the issue. The cause of an early morning hotel fire is still under investigation. Firefighters were called to a fire at the Biltmore Hotel around 3.30 this morning. Upon arrival, they discovered a small fire had started in the interior wall of part of the hotel that was being remodeled. Guests were evacuated just for a short time. Fire crews doused the flames quickly, then cut open part of a wall to make sure the fire wasn't smoldering. Now, there isn't a damaged estimate just yet, but the fire was contained to a small area that's not expected to affect the function of the hotel. Grand Forks and UND are working on a new plan to make the city a place for young people to stay and play. They're planning development of vibrancy districts, areas that are enhanced to be attractive to young adults. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us what this is all about. The city of Grand Forks and UND are working on a plan to create vibrancy districts. One might be located here along 42nd Street on the west side of campus, another on campus and one downtown. Areas that appeal to young adults. Uh, whether it's restaurants, coffee shops, you know, maybe a bar or two, things like that. Just things, places where students really just kind of want to hang out. The idea behind all this is to keep more of the 15,000 students who attend UND here in Grand Forks after they graduate by creating more places for them to start businesses and more places to play. Whether it's artistic, whether it's art entrepreneurial type centers, where we can, we can keep folks that are, um, start at UND, uh, they can um, begin working here um, in Grand Forks and then hopefully start businesses. Phelan says that could mean more centers where UND graduates could start businesses at a very low cost to create more jobs. He says plans also call for much faster and convenient bus service between UND and downtown. We want to get a good plan so that we can start uh, as soon as possible and really see the fruits of our labors um, over the next you know five to ten years where we really have a strong and vibrant connected community. Do you think a lot more North Dakota students would stay in North Dakota if there were opportunities for them? Absolutely and I think that's that's really the the goal of this kind of an initiative is to uh, you know not only make sure that students are, are having a good time in college but also wanting to stay uh, in in North Dakota as a place where they can have a career and a family. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Officials hope to have a master plan completed by the end of this year and start putting it into action. A groundbreaking ceremony gets underway in less than a half an hour for a new Veterans Memorial Park in Grand Forks. The new park will be located next to the roundabout just northwest of Columbia Mall. Today's groundbreaking marks the beginning of a fundraising effort to raise $1.6 million for the park. So far, $50,000 has been raised for this project. If you'd like to donate, we have more information online. Go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. Don't forget, Wheel of Fortune is coming to Fargo, and you could be a contestant. The Wheelmobile is going to take place during two special days of contestant searches this weekend. 
The event is sponsored by Shooting Star Casino. It's taking place at Shields Arena July 11th and 12th. Doors open at 11 a.m. For details and rules, you can visit our website, valleynewslive.com. There's a banner at the top of our homepage. Still ahead tonight, the need for plasma donations and how you can save someone's life. Severe thunderstorms roaming through the northern Red River Valley right now. I'll have details on when and if they arrive in the Fargo or Grand Forks areas coming up right after this.